This is Ed Rep Radio, presented by Eastman Music Company. This is Ed Rep Radio, a podcast to bring you ideas and information from industry experts you can use on the road every day. Presented by Eastman Music Company, and I'm your host, Shane Duell. So you're a new Ed Rep. Congratulations on joining a very important group of individuals who, as Charlie Mangini from Episode 1 of Ed Rep Radio calls the Red Cross for Band Directors. As an ed rep, you provide critical support for school music teachers and school music programs, as well as a vital role in the success of the business you represent. I think most ed reps will tell you it's a very rewarding job, and sometimes a very challenging job. It also doesn't come with a training manual, and many ed reps have to figure out the job, well, on the job. This episode is to help new ed reps start their career on the right track with advice from a group of seasoned ed rep managers from some of the best music stores in the country. Alex Beamer, Julie Wagnitz, Tim Dawson, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is our first roundtable discussion on ed rep radio, and uh, I'm so glad that the three of you could make it here. Uh, this is a topic that I think is going to be so very valuable uh, for for many ed reps, not just those who are starting off in this job for the first time. And uh, I'll introduce the three of you. You all have very similar roles at your various music stores, that being school services managers or ed rep managers or directors, uh, various titles, but very similar role at the, the different music stores. And uh, Alex, uh, let's start with you. Sure. Thanks for having us here, uh, here Shane. Um so yeah, uh, from West Music, uh, we're we're in Iowa. Um, you know, I've been with the company for about ten years now. Um, Vice President of School Music Services. Uh, we have eight uh, road reps that service our territory from Eastern Iowa and Southern Minnesota, Southwest Wisconsin, there and uh, Western Illinois, um, and. You know they're they're a they're a fantastic team. I mean they are definitely mm. um, the the backbone of of the company, right? You know that in repair uh, was what the the company was founded on. So, um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and what a great reputation West Music has there in Iowa in the region. Uh, next we have Julie Wagnitz of Hyde Music. Hi, Julie. Hi. How are you today? Excellent. Thanks for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, I have been with Hyde Music for collectively almost 20 years. I am the director of school music services. So I manage all of our ed rep reps and our repair teams and some support staff. Um, And all together, it's about 26 collective employees. Hmm. Wow. Big team. And another great store from the Midwest. Uh, Such a great team out there. And we have Tim Dawson from Pages Music. Hey, Tim. Hey, Shane. How are you? Excellent. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it very much. I guess yeah. I'm the old guy on the team here. I've uh, got 31 years in here at Pages wow. Music, on, working on my 32nd, and uh, it's been a, a wonderful ride. My role is uh, Director of School Sales for Pages. I've got uh, six full-time road reps, uh, including myself, out on, not including myself, out on the road. Uh, and uh, I've got an inside staff of about four, four uh uh, people that also uh, participate in the in the road road activity. Yeah, yeah, another wonderful store. We've had some thank great you. guests from Pages Music in the past here on Ed Rep Radio. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. So the topic today is something that uh, you know when I think we can all say on this call when we first started as an Ed Rep, we we probably all wished we had this episode that we're about to record. Because there's no training manual, there's no, uh, you know, YouTube how-to video on how to do this job, on how to be an ed rep. And uh, a lot of times, I'll talk to ed reps around the country, and a lot of times their their introduction is, "Hey, here's the keys, there's the van, go, good luck." So this episode is for those ed reps who who need some, you know some direction, some guidance, some advice on what to do, particularly in that first year of, of doing this job, of being an ed rep. And 
Uh, I find there's lots of different backgrounds ed reps will come from, but there are some certain uh, pieces of advice and direction that if they heed for the first year, they'll be much more successful. And I think the three of you represent some wonderful stores with a huge history of success of teams on the road and look forward to hearing uh, your advice for these first year ed reps. And honestly, I'll bet a lot of people listen who've been doing the job for a while, who will learn from you and get all sorts of uh, good tips. So I wanted to start with the big picture of, of why ed reps are out there in the first place. So Alex, let's start with you. Why do ed reps exist in your business? What's their overall goal or overall role in the company? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, they are, um, absolutely one of the most important parts of our company and of the business and, and why we need them is because, uh, they are the relationship conduit, right. From, uh, our school programs in our area back to the company, you know, specifically in Iowa, you know, we have some people who are driving two hours away, right. To get to that school Mm. district that doesn't necessarily have the opportunity for those parents to, you know, come into the quote unquote big city of, of, uh, Iowa city, right. <laughs> to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, pick up their instrument or to get that box of reads or something like that. So, you know, we have these people who are able to frequent the, these communities that, um, quite frankly are, you know, starved for the opportunity to be able to, you know, have access to these types of resources. Sure. Mm, they could, mm. they could get it. They could get it online, right? Maybe, maybe they could be able to go click the button and get it from a retailer online or something like that. But when you're able to have an actual conversation with somebody, you know, in front of you, that's knowledgeable about the instrument that um, their child is playing or that the band director doesn't know about because they're a brass player and they need to know about clarinets or something like that. Um, that's why these people are so exceptionally valuable. They, they're a resource that you cannot get from a computer screen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So true. What do you think, Tim? Uh, for us, it's pretty simple. Um, their, their responsibility is to get and keep accounts. Mm. They are the relationship builders. They are the people, people, they are the face of the company. Um, without that relationship, there is no access, broad access to parents and students. And, uh, they are, they are, um, responsible for going out and bringing back the business to the company, managing those relationships with, with school music directors, um, in their territory, um, and sometimes even outside their territory, which is kind of exciting when that happens. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Julie, what do you think? Well, we call our ed reps school account managers. And though they have inside support, they manage, they really manage the relationship. And that's one thing that all three of us, that's one word that all three of us just said, relationship. Mm. Um, They're relationship builders, they're business drivers, they're problem solvers. They truly bridge the gap between the company and the director. And and nothing is more important than that. Um, Like um, Alex was talking about where he's located, you know, I'm in Wisconsin and we service Wisconsin and upper Michigan. I have road reps that drive five hours away in different Ooh. time zones, you know, so, so these districts are starved for, um, for human contact and, um, to have somebody to talk to and to have somebody help them. And, and really that relationship is key. And I think all three of us basically said in a nutshell that these are the most important people that drive our business, that form the relationships that we need to keep building music education. Mm, yeah. Yeah, you're right. The The word relationships is incredibly important. We spent a lot of time on this, this podcast talking about relationships, and, and I do want to dig into that with a series of questions specifically on relationships with all three of you. Uh, we'll get back to that, uh, but thank you for that. So, you know, the... The school year is something that is so cyclical. It's kind of like you follow the same pattern year after year. And I think something that would be helpful for for new ed reps who haven't experienced the entire year yet is to explain 
what is the cycle? What does it usually look like? And it might be different for every store, but there's probably some things in common. Um, so Tim, let's start with you. Maybe let's start with um, the most obvious, the back to school season. Uh, starting there, what does what does the yearly cycle look like starting with back to school? And, and what can an ed rep kind of look forward to or plan for? Sure. All of our reps come from either teaching or a background in school school music somehow, either from internally inside of our business or uh, or from administration. So they have a good feel for uh, what that's going to look like. And that is back to school crush. Then we have maybe a, a four to six week um, time where we're really diving into the routine, getting the directors uh, accommodated to their schedules. Um, and then we have step up season for, for the fourth quarter for us. Hmm. Um, January 1, we start kicking off our beginning rent, uh, rental programs with recruiting and go all the way through the end of hmm. May for that. And then okay. it's summer repair season where we're bringing in summer repairs for all, all of our schools and, and uh, taking care of business. And then summertime, there's, there's a lull there for us. Uh, but the fall back to school, which actually starts at the end of July for us, um, is, is the big crush. It's um, the most volume mm -hmm. going through the vehicles and uh, lots of displays. Um, we do a, a shortened, abbreviated in Indiana. Um, about 30% of the, the recruiting happens in the fall with that January through May uh, taking up much of the 70% of that recruiting processes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of recruiting, uh, isn't it? It is a lot of recruiting and, and uh, um, something that happened in every day, you know, um, hmm. and that's, that's important, we think. And, and those, those uh, road reps, or we call them district managers, are responsible for, for managing that process uh, which, with each of their directors. Um, so it's, it's, a, uh, um, it's a great cycle because it ebbs and flows throughout the year, you know, um, uh, the step up season is a heavy time for us as well because it's it's uh, uh, they're motivated um, mm. and and directors are motivated. Uh, we're lucky in that we have uh, a great partnership with directors and and uh, uh, we enjoy a good step up season. So it's it's kind of fun making that happen. Yeah, great, Julie. Well, Ed Rips in my world, everything um, revolves around the school rental. Um, it's obviously the really busy time of the year for us is late spring, early fall. Um, and, but we're always using the other times of the year to prepare us and our customers to do things earlier rather than later as it's a really smart business plan. Um, yes, we have a busy rental season, solo ensemble season, marching season, um, but it's always recruitment season. And that's what's hmm. important. I try to not make, I, I try to really not make it cyclical that we hmm. always need to be thinking about recruitment and we always mm -hmm. need to be thinking about how we're building our rental season. Um, and I think when you map out a yearly job description as a road rep, the yearly cycle is a constant focus on rentals and recruitment. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a process. It's not an event. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. Alex. Yeah. You know how uh, Tim and, Julie laid it out. I mean, it's pretty much, uh, I would say, for for the most part, uh, pretty standard across the the country. I mean, there's always some variations, right? You know, there's some variations where some schools start earlier, as you know, Tim mentioned. They they start at the end of July for them, right? We're we're not really kind of full on until the end of August, that type of thing. So we're you know mm -hmm. we're a little little later, um, which kind of presents problems for us at times, right? Because you know, because it's a little later, it just it butts up against you know, what we, you know, I guess kind of in the industry, we consider the the step-up season, the major step-up season is in there in Q4, right? But it just kind of, mm. it, it doesn't give a lot of time for everyone to kind of reset, you know, at the end mm -hmm. of, um, uh, at the end of rental season and then going into step-up season. So it can be a little bit of a, um, a long haul for our people. You know, that's why I always try to tell everyone, you know, get rested up in the summertime, man, because whenever when it hits here in the fall, you know, you're going to be going until, until January at least, right. Mm. Cause you're trying to go through step up season and as well as rental season. Um, but they hit the nail on the head, right? I mean, it's recruiting all year round. That's, that's the, mm. the it, you never stop. You never stop. You never stop trying to give resources to your teachers. So um, while there are busy times, the, the time is always about recruitment. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm not surprised that that you pretty much have everything in common here since the school year and the, and the school music cycle is so similar around the country. In the fall, you have back to school season with rentals and uh, late fall, you holiday season, you move into step ups and then you move after Christmas into recruitment, sometimes pretty heavily, sounds like. And then it's summer repair season and then you start all over again. Does that sound about like a, a good synopsis of your year? Yeah, That's much, yeah. exactly it. Okay. Yeah. Good. So how long do you think it takes for an ed rep to really start to feel comfortable with this job? Does it take a full year to experience the cycle to, to start to feel like you know what's coming? Let's start with you, Julie. Um, I don't know if an ed rep will ever feel 100% truly comfortable, to be honest. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are so many scenarios um, that, again, if they're a good problem solver, it helps them feel more comfortable. Mm. Um, it also helps if they have a good team to bounce ideas off of. Um, I think that if they know they can talk through situations with their manager and other road team members, it gives them you know, comfort. Um, and I think just, just knowing that they have a good team backing them up is super, super, super important. Mm. Um, but I think being on the road, um, you have to know that you're, it, it is the unexpected sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Be ready to, for anything, right? Right. Yeah. Tim? I think it's, uh, certainly 12 months to go through this, the cycle, another 12 mm. to fully understand it. And then another 12 to have impact on that cycle. Mm. So 24 to 36 and, and they're in, and that's, you know, we approach it, um, um, experientially first, um, uh, from a training aspect, they have to get in and get their, their feet and their hands and everything in, in the process. And, and, uh, um, I think that first year is, um, one of our guys, uh, said it best the other day, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Ah. And, uh, uh, that's, that was his, his experience, his first 12 months. And, and, uh, uh, fortunately he's in his third year now and everything kind of makes sense to him and, and he's able mm. to, to manage those, those, uh, um, those flyers or those, uh, um, those, uh, things that go awry. At, at the last mm -hmm. second, uh, much better than he was able to that first year. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so 12, 24 and 36 for us. Yeah. I like that. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, I think it's, you know, um, it's fairly similar, similar, but you know, I think, I think the, um, important distinction is when, is when, um, road reps can become competent versus when they can become a master seller. Mm. Right. Uh, because, you know, it is drinking from a fire hose for the first 12 months. I mean, getting through a psych school year is definitely uh, challenging. I mean, mm -hmm. it's challenging for the most experienced people. I mean, you know, as Julie was mention mentioning, expect the unexpected. Right. I mean, that's essentially kind of what's what's going on. But if you want to talk about being a master seller and being able to uh, help, you know, teachers get the maximum amount out of their budget, you know, that could be a five to 10 year process before they mm. actually truly understand how to um, be a master, uh, you know, road rep. Yeah. Yeah. Is there ever really an end to, to the mastery? I don't think so. Only because um, the, there's always a new, there's always a new thing, right? You know, like mm. if we talk about, you know, like different types of funding and how to, how to utilize those and how to get your teachers to be able to, um, you know, maximize those dollars. I mean, there's always going to be a different angle, right? That, that, you know, we have to kind of play and have to help our teachers be able to play with this whole ESSER thing, right? You know, we never had, you know, never had all these, you know, millions and billions of dollars into the, into the federal system. Right. But, um, you know, that was a whole play that we all had to learn on a fly. Right. So, mm. you know, it's being able to adapt, um, to, you know, essentially go out there and win that business. So I don't think it's ever, I don't think it ever, you know, ends, but you know, there's definitely levels you might say. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So you, a couple of you mentioned that your first year you're drinking from a fire hose. And I think we all understand what that means. There's just so much coming at you with this new job and so many different aspects to the job. Uh, and I'm curious if you were to prioritize what really should a first year ed rep focus on? What is the most important thing to, to start to master early on? 
what do you think, Tim? Um, that's a great question. I mean, because you can go so many different ways with this. I think, I think the, the very first day from the very first day, a, a road rep has to establish productive habits. And that those habits can be as simple as getting your butt out of bed, hmm. making it to your first call on time and every other call the rest of that day. Um, and, and, uh, making sure you you look professional. Um, uh, we, we take the approach that we don't wear jeans on the road. Um, we want our, our guys to have a little bit, uh, uh, more professional look. Um, they choose to wear logo wear it's their option, but it's, it's easily identifiable in a school. If you're walking through hmm. the principal can identify you as you're the pages guy or you're, you're, uh, uh, the instrument rep and you're taking care of business. Um, the, the second thing I think comes in is, is actually born out of the, the hiring process. We try to hire great communicators. And so they, um, the road reps have to have a certain level of communication skill and friendliness to them. And, uh, um, I think if, if they can be up uh, get up, show up, and be up. They're going to be very friendly when they're when they're in the school setting, and, and I think that's real important um, to develop those kinds of habits uh, right off the bat. Um, mm. And then, um, if if the road rep can uh, get those three things done, they ha- they need to learn to listen. Um, you know, they they need to learn to to listen to understand not just to banter back and forth. It's really listening to understand, listening between the lines. And I think that's those four things will, will help a, um, a young road rep be more successful right off the bat um, hmm. than anything. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. What do you think, Julie? The first thing that I think is important is having the understanding that this is a professional sales position. Hmm. Um, it's not. It's not a delivery position. (laughs) Um, It's not a fly by night position um, that you are viewed as a professional sales, as a professional salesperson. Um, You are going there for a purpose and that's to to provide a service for the director. Um, So always having that purpose is important. You're not just showing up to show up to say hi, um, but making sure that you you understand that and have that purpose. Um, The second thing 100% 100% is building the trust with the director. Um, I find that ed reps are viewed as trusted advisors. Um, and the ones that are viewed that way seem to be more successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you're viewed that way, once that trust is built, the selling part is really easy. Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, all three of us that are on this call right now, um, we're none of our stores are nonprofit. We have to sell something. We can't just go to just go. Um, So understanding that, that we need to go for a reason and um, selling is not a dirty word. (laughs) Um, Agreed. Understanding understanding that ahead of time is super important. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. All good stuff. Alex. Yeah. We really focus on two things um, and that's their organizational skills. Mm -hmm. Because Hmm. if they are not organized, uh, they are going to fail. It's really pretty simple. Um, And then uh, the other thing is is definitely uh, touching on what uh, Tim mentioned as far as communication skills. Um, If they don't know how to manage communication flow between, um, you know, directors, parents, uh, administrative offices, their own internal channels and everything like that all at once, um, they're going to fail again, too, because there's everything coming at them all at once, especially during, uh, you know, when the season hits. Right. I mean, there's so mm. much communication that flies into the email inbox or text messages that if they don't know how to manage it appropriately, um, it's just not going to work. So we really um, make sure that they're able to uh, do those two things, you know, be be an organized person and then be able to uh, manage your communication back and forth with any type of internal or external customer. Um, and then the last one is, is. Um, at least for the first year, we really try to focus on any type of product knowledge deficiencies that they have. So hmm. if they're, uh, you know, if they're a brass player and they need to know about, you know, woodwinds or percussion or something like that or or vice versa or whatever, we really get them involved with um, product managers, category managers, all those things so that they, they make hmm. sure that whenever they walk into the room, they can represent those three snare drums that they should for the middle school band director so that that person can make the, the choice really easily since they're a clarinet player, right? You know, and, you know, help them to be able to... Um, 
you know, make decisions on the fly instead of having to, you know, sit on something for weeks and weeks before a decision is made. So uh, those generally are the three things. And that's just the first year, obviously. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Alex, let's stick with you on this next question. So what are a few common mistakes that you see ed reps make in that first year? Uh, I'm sure there's there's some things you could think back on. Maybe all of us on this call are, are our own first year or uh, something that you see fairly common with new ed reps that um, maybe they should be aware of uh, and, and, and focus that, that this doesn't happen to them. What, what's the most common mistakes you see? Uh, one big one is uh, making a promise that you can't keep, hmm. right? So, you know, like uh, a great example is, um, you know, you're getting displays set on the calendar and everything like that. And you tell a teacher, oh, yeah, we can definitely do that that night and all that kind of stuff. And you get back to the store and um, you haven't checked your own personal calendar and you realize that you got three other displays on that very night. So, um, hmm. you know, that's that's you always got to make sure that you um, under promise and over deliver. You know, keep that phrase in the back of your mind. You'll be just fine. Uh, hmm. You know, just say that we'll go back and we'll check on it and I'll get back with you, that type of thing. Or just tell people that you don't know. If you don't know an answer, it's way better to say that than it is to uh, try to come up with some, you know, something that's definitely not <laughs> correct. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, that's that's definitely not good for anybody. Um, so those are those are two big things. And then, you know, the last one is is um, it, it really does come down to the org- organizational effort. Um, I see a lot of road reps that uh, fail within their first year because they're just simply not organized. You know, they go to a stop and they don't have that, you know, box of reads that they were supposed to have because they didn't Mm. check their shelf correctly. And now here they are. The teacher needed it that night and, you know, they don't have it when they should have had it. So it's it's very they're very simple processes. But I'll tell you what, Shane, they are they're hard to do. Hmm. They are really hard to do to master, especially whenever you have to deal with, you know, uh, a ton of accounts. Hmm. Maybe simple in uh, the idea, but difficult in execution. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Julie? I'm going to echo a little bit what Alex had to say. Um, I think sometimes people feel like they have to give an answer and they don't Hmm. know the correct information um, because they feel like they're being a disservice when they don't give an answer. And one of the biggest things that, that I think is important is being able to say, you know what? I'm not sure of this answer. Let me dig into this and I'll get back to you. And then the follow through. That is super, super, super important. So Mm. with that being said, my second thing is consistency because following up with your customers when you say you're going to, showing up on time, returning emails, um, messages, just being timely on things, that's what builds the director's trust. And Mm. we all know, we all know it takes a really long time to build their trust but it takes one stupid mistake to lose an account. So true. Yeah, good point. I like that. Tim? Um, I, I'll add two things uh, to what Alex and, and Julie said. Both were spot on, uh, being consistent. Um, a, couple, a couple of things. Um, a a first-year road rep will sometimes get um, uh, pinned down by... Um, taking on all of the emotional baggage that the director has mm-hmm. and making it their own. They need to be able to learn to manage those emotional uh, situations as not their own, but because mm-hmm. they have to go through their weekly call or their daily, you know, their emotions are doing this up and down thing all day long anyway. And they have to be able to uh, manage those emotions uh, because they're going to see somebody bright and uh, new in the next in the next 45 minutes at a different school, and that director is not not going to care what's happening at the director before. So the the road rep has to be focused on on uh, uh, being ready and able to help uh, that next person. Um, I covered a little bit earlier not listening to understand. I think there's a, a fairly uh, easy trap to get into is is just in the 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 magical banter that happens, um, and <laughs> and when you're really truly trying to help something, you have to read and listen between the lines. Um, that's all part. What do you of mean by that? Listening between the lines. Yeah. Uh, listening to what's not said, um, in addition to what is said, I think, hmm. and understanding when you walk in the room, you have to read the room. 
uh, understand what's happening uh, um, around you um, because if it's if it's a crazy drama day and the director's um, not ready for what you have to offer that day, um, you're not going to get anywhere. And you have to be able to mm. to pivot and and uh, uh, make make the call a productive call for you and for them and for the company. Um, Julie mentioned uh, mm. something early uh, um, um, a couple of uh, a couple of moments ago. Um, sometimes road reps will forget while they're there why they're there, and they mm. Joe Guth, uh, famous Eastman uh, salesman and and former Gemeinhart flute salesman, um, mm. gave me some great advice. Um, he said, "Remember why you're there, um, and you're there." on behalf of the company, representing the company, you're going to build this great, wonderful friendship with that director, but you have a job to do and it's to take care of business. Um, so, so if uh, a road rep is not taking care of business on those weekly calls, that is an easy trap. Um, mm, great advice. And yeah. then, and then uh, uh, I think there's, there's um, on occasion um, we've seen a road rep overstay their welcome and it makes the director uncomfortable. Um, if, huh. if they're coughing or if they're fidgeting or if they're going straight to their email, uh, and trying to look back and forth and, and, uh, um, uh, realize, you know, a, a young road rep needs to understand when they're really wanted and needed. Um, and, and so they have to understand to, uh, not overstay their welcome. Mm, yeah. And re respect that teacher's time. It sounds like. Yeah. Because at some point. Uh, at some point, the the road rep is going to need to make a withdrawal, and if they haven't uh, made those deposits um, and in time deposits, um, I'm speaking of, um, got to recognize when you can when you can sell and when you need to back away and pivot to a different a different strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. I appreciate it, everybody. So uh, a big topic for road reps of, of any kind, um, is the route itself, like the daily, weekly, monthly route you drive. And, um, for a brand new road rep, sometimes it's, it's daunting to see this long list of teachers and districts. And you wonder, where do I start? How do I organize this? And I'd like to dig into this topic of, of actually creating a, an effective route and things to think about as you're, as you're running it. Um, so Julie, let's start with you. What are a few tips you might give a, a new ed rep when they get this list of teachers in schools, how do they start organizing where they go, when they go and that kind of thing? Right. Um, I, I have three things that I really look at. The most important three things is do the best you can, you can to plan your visits when the directors can actually talk with you. Right. <laughs> um, that, that's super important because, again, you're not a delivery person. You're not just dropping something off. I know that sometimes that happens, um, but really do your best to, to schedule that time where you can have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with them because, again, building that relationship is what's the most important part of your visit. Hmm. Um, the, second, the second one is – always allow yourself some time for the unexpected too. Mm -hmm. You never know what's going to happen on that visit. Sometimes, you know, you might get into a conversation about something that, you know, like if you were going there with a trumpet, all of a sudden you're looking at their timpani or you're looking at their marimba or the choral teacher grabs you and you're looking at pianos. Always allow some time for that. Um, I can't tell you how many times that um, I've priced things out for school secretaries and, you know, the principal grabs you. My daughter's in elementary school, wants to play violin. You want to be able to build those relationships because you're building it you're building it in the whole building. The whole building sees you as a trusted advisor when the director is already trusting you. So it's super hmm. important to have all those relationships. The third thing, this, this one is hands down one of the most important is make sure you're not visiting if your competitor is visiting the same day. Oh, always visit <laughs> on a different day. <laughs> it seems so basic, right? Uh, yeah. Seems so very, very, very basic. Yeah. Um, if, if you're both going on the same day, you're not doing any good for either of you. It's it's a waste of time. So hmm. super, super, super important. Sometimes your directors don't even tell you this. Um, you see it, you know, when you sign in for the day that, you know, another music store was there earlier that day or or the day before. So always take a look at your schedule to make sure that you're getting the most benefit 
out of your visit. <laughs> yeah. Good tip. Good tip. That could make for some awkward encounters in the hallways, wouldn't it, with your competitor? Most often Lee does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, I think, um, you know, what, what Julie was talking about, there's, you know, as far as uh, consistency with seeing teachers and, uh, you know, people seeing you in the building, right? They're, they're seeing your face. They, they know who you work for. They know what you're doing, all those types of things. Um, you know, those are definitely really important things to, to be able to make sure as you're building your route that, that people actually see your face. Hmm. Um, because if you're, you know, if you're calling on a school and no one knows who you are, are you really calling on the school? Or are you just walking into the building? So, um, you know, that, so that's, that's interesting, but you know, the thing that, that is very challenging for, um, not even just new people, right. Uh, new reps, but, uh, um, veterans is, uh, the constant changing of school schedules. Mm -hmm. So even <clears> though you have, maybe you've had a route that has been built, uh, prior to you even coming on uh, to the company and that route has been in stone for the past 10 years or something. The moment that a school decides to go from, you know, like a nine bell schedule to a, to a block scheduling now, I mean, you know, you're thrown through a loop because it's in the middle of the day. Right. So how do you mm. build that around it? And, um, we've had, you know, a lot of those things happen. Um, what, what I try to, you know, push our reps to do is think creatively and outside of the box. And that, that's how, how can you have a face-to-face -face conversation, um, with, you know, your teachers without, you know, even necessarily having to be in the building because there are times where that happens where, you know, you, you know, it just works out on your route that, you know, you're coming through X, X, uh, town and uh, the, the teacher is, you know, they're, that's when they have banned, but there's no other way to build it. Hmm. So um, I impress upon our, our, you know, our reps to, you know, definitely make sure that you stop at the school with whatever, you know, is needed um, during that time. But then you also make sure you follow up with some sort of, um, um, you know, we like to use Vidyard a lot, right? So, you know, they, they, send, a, they send a personalized video or something to, hmm. uh, to the teacher so that, you know, there's still that face-to-face -face interaction, right? So they can still do some sort of sales pitch or something like that through, um, through the video, even though that they don't, maybe they don't see them. Um, so that's, that's definitely, that's definitely a cool thing, but you know, hey, um, what did you call it, Alex? What was that, that video? Was it an app? Yeah, it's just a, it's a free free software on um, online. It's Vidyard, V I D Y A R D. Vidyard. Huh. Yeah, I'll and put a link just, to that in this uh, episode note. Yeah, you can create really quick, you know, videos. I mean, you know, th well, the first couple are are exceptionally long, right? Because you you don't know what you're doing, and then you stumble over your words and all that. Stuff. So it takes <laughs> you like 15 minutes to record 30 seconds. But but after you um, figure it out, you know, you can fire off these videos really quickly and. Um, you know, you can track people who open it and all that kind of stuff. It's really, it's really pretty, pretty cool. Um, and it's a way to have a face-to-face -face interaction, even though it's not necessarily um, an interaction back uh, to you. Um, but the director is seeing your face, right? Hmm. So they see your face and they know who you are. Yeah. So they're like, you know, hey, you know, John sent me an email about some reads. Maybe I should get some reads, you know, that type of thing. So, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great way to keep the relationship going if you run into scheduling issues. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Good stuff. So Tim, what, what advice do you give your, your new ed reps on, on building and, and running a route? Uh, well, if they're, if they're a new ed rep for us, they have, they're taking over an existing schedule either from the previous year or if it's mid year, the established schedule for that year already. So, um, uh, so they can start with that. Um, and then, and then it, when they get changes or if it's the beginning of a year and their schedule changes, they're, they're trying to see the director on their prep, um, a 30 minute break, a lunch, end of a lunch break, not the beginning because, um, some directors get hangry, you know, <laughs> um, uh, we want them to be flexible. We understand that there's distance and geography involved in all that. Julie, uh, Julie mentioned, um, make sure there's plenty of space, to expect the unexpected to happen, the Murphy's Law thing to happen, um, allow for any kind of delay, allow for any kind of lockdown that might happen, uh, that, that kind of thing. Of course, you can't plan for that kind of thing, but, but you're going to have to make sure a new rep has plenty of space and that you, you recommend, okay, you may not see this director at, at uh, you may have an appointment at 840 and then your next appointment might not be until 10 o'clock. 
Um, and uh, you're not going to spend your entire time there. Um, you're going to have some drive time, but that is for for the the new person to get their bearings set um, and reset again on that on that next appointment. So plenty of space. Um, I recommend to our guys that they put their farthest school away from the uh, away from the store or away from home in the middle of their day. That way they can work out and then work work their way their way back um, mm. uh, to their stopping point. Uh, sometimes it works out. Most of the time it does work out. If it doesn't work out, there's some, some snafus or, or there's just a, the person can't see you at that time. So you have to kind of rebuild. Um, um, geography definitely makes a difference. The, the five hour drive, or I think our longest, our longest drive for us is about three and a half hours, um, hmm. in the state, the same time zone, thankfully, slow time, fast time. Uh, but, but, uh, um, it uh, it is a a uh, a thing that takes takes time and effort to build that schedule. Usually, it takes us um, about three weeks to three four weeks to settle into a schedule once we get a new year started. Um, and it, it'll take the new rep uh, probably five or six until everything's everything's in place and they can run consistently. Hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to pause here for a second. I got to notice that Julie's browser is preventing recording. Are you seeing that, Julie? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's saying to suggest to stop this recording a second. So I'm just... so one thing that uh, speaking with ed reps around the country and riding along with them, uh, I see variations on this, and that is. Do you see every teacher every week, regardless, or do you somehow prioritize teachers based on whatever criteria it is uh, and, and see certain teachers once a week, some every other week, some once a month? And I'm curious uh, amongst the three of you and, and your ed reps, if you, if you follow one of these plans, if you, if you see everybody once a week or if there's some sort of a variation there. What do you think, Alex? Um, I think it all depends on the uh, route itself. You know, if 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 it's a more rural type situation, uh, it kind of makes more sense to see everybody, right? Because I mean, you're driving through the town, anyways. I mean, you know, it's it's it. Why would you not stop and have the potential of something, you know, be or somebody be able to uh, want to purchase something? I mean, or mm. or need some business done. So that's you know that's a, an interesting thing. Um, you know, we kind of subscribe to a little bit of a hybrid model as far as seeing everybody um, each week versus kind of, you know, doing a little bit of uh, criteria uh, based on uh, programs. Um, but, you know, there might be there might be some teachers who we need to see more than once a week, depending on the size of the program. I mean, like, you know, if it's if it's an exceptionally large program and and they need, you know, things on a twice a week. And sometimes we actually have a program that sometimes we'll see three times a week hmm. just because they have so much that goes on and, um, so many, you know, rentals or repairs or something breaking or whatever, um, hmm. that needs to be taken care of. And it's a high volume account, right? So, you know, hmm. I mean, it's going to be different for the, that school versus the school that, um, you know, has has 10 kids in the class and they just don't have as many things to break right you know or they don't have as many yeah. rentals they need to exchange i mean that's just that's just the the simplicity of it um so i think it really de it it depends on the account and i think it also depends on the the way the route is built yeah makes a lot of sense tim we promise a weekly call and i think that's the expectation here in indiana um uh, no more than than once a week uh, is is how we have set up operations. Our uh, repair shop turns repairs around within a week. If it's longer than a week, it's either due to not getting the approval from the customer or the director, or it's a doozy and it's holding for parts, mm. uh, something like that. But but uh, it's a weekly call for us, um, and uh, we we always try to do it, of course, on their on their prep period. Um, even before school, um, uh, we have reps that'll be in the first, their first school at six fifteen, six fifteen or six thirty in the morning. 
um, because classes start at seven or seven thirty, and and uh, those are prime times that you can see a director and their attention is with you, and and uh, um, um, that just happens week after week. And it's hmm. it's um, if we want di- directors to depend on us and learn to depend on us um, and to set their watch by us. So what, when I walk in the door at uh, Zionsville Middle School at 7.15 on a Monday, whether the director knows it's Monday or not, he knows it's going to be Monday because Tim's walking in the door at hmm. 7.15. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, good. What do you think, Julie? Well, I think a lot of things come into play here. And it kind of depends on how your what your company philosophy is for a f- successful school program. Um, hmm. if, if your if your company you know loves the high dollar bids and wants the full number, then visiting those types of schools that that don't have a lot of rentals but give you a lot of dollar value each month, you know, each week. Hmm. Um, personally. You know, I don't go after those types of schools on a weekly basis. Um, The the value isn't there, but there are some companies that do. Um, We do have bi-weekly road routes at Hyde Music, um, and we have weekly road routes. Um, We have some schools that are, you know, like I said, four, five hours away that we might visit on a bi-weekly basis. Hmm. Um, We still contact them weekly, um, but we actually see them face-to-face on a bi-weekly basis. Um, but I think as far as criteria, um, I think what what we really look at is a school might not give you much monetary sales. You know, you might not they might not have a large budget. They might only have, you know, a two hundred dollar repair budget and two hundred fifty dollars in their, you know, in their budget to spend on accessories, but they have a high volume of your rental instruments. So they're you're there servicing those students. Um, mm-hmm. on a weekly basis. And that's the kind of criteria that I look at and that we value. Um, but again, every store might value, you know, s- something different as far as what they look at as being a successful visit. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah. 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 Good. Going back to something Alex said, uh, you know, there's that school that gets three visits because they, they're they a big account and they do a lot of business. And then there are other schools that do only a handful. And that kind of leads me to my next question is, you may or may not have this historical data of sales and rentals from your accounts, maybe sometimes going back for, for years. Uh, maybe this school does uh, 10 rentals. This one does 100 rentals. And I'm curious if if you present this information to your new ed reps in any way to kind of show them which accounts, I guess, are the biggest producers for the store and, and which ones uh, are maybe at the bottom of the list. I'm, I'm curious if this data informs um, how you, I guess, uh, show this rep what their priorities might be, or, or does it inform your decisions in any way? What do you think, Tim? For us, every director is is uh, equally important, whether they're doing a, a, a two or five rental school or they're doing a 50 or 100 rental school, because more than likely that two to five rental director is going to become eventually, if we're doing our job right, a 50 to 100 rental director hmm. down the road. So we want them to experience everything that we have to offer um, uh, right from the get go. Um, and we try to treat everybody equally the same, you know. Um, hmm. So the the uh, the volume guy gets just as much time as the little guy. The little guy gets just as much time as the big guy, and and uh, um, because it's the the part about the the relationship job um, in in the road rep, the ninety percent of the job is relationship. Ten percent is handling all the stuff. You know, making sure the stuff gets there, but but the real job of the road rep is to manage that relationship, and you have to treat those directors the same because they talk right. to each other. I only get five minutes. Well, I I get forty five minutes with them. Interesting. But, you know, I we we want them to feel appreciated, and so we value their time just as much whether the volume is there or not. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, I I um I totally agree. 
uh, with Tim that I think that it's 100% a relationship business and um, that uh, you need to definitely make sure that, you know, you're treating people um, with the same respect and the same care that you would, you know, any other um, account. But I think the important thing is, is that um, data really determines the for-profit nature of your company as hmm. Julie mentioned earlier. So um, if there is an account that essentially requires, not even that they're asking, but they require more attention because they're doing 300 rentals, plus they have 300 repairs that are coming in, plus they're doing $300,000. I don't know why I went with three threes, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm saying if they, you know, if, if they're doing, if they're doing all that type of business, then yeah, natural, just naturally, because they're, they're going to require, they're going to require more time than someone who only has 10 rentals. The, mm-hmm. They're just, they're just not going to need as much time. Hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have to be, um, you know, that you shouldn't be as respectful and as attentive to their needs as at time comes on. But, but what it might mean is that if they need a, you know, box that reads or a ligature screw that you just drop it in the mail instead of, you know, worry about, you know, uh, getting to that school because you might have to go deliver 200 rentals. Right. You know what I'm hmm. saying? So yeah. I think it's, I think it's important to really, we use data in every single one of our decisions. We are a data-driven organization, and it is 100%, to, you know, pretty much decides, you know, how we we do our business. So um, if we're seeing an account that, you know, just quite frankly, due to proximity and to, you know, population count has more money, we're going to have to service them in just a slightly different way because their needs require that due to the size of the account. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as far as data, if you don't have it, I mean... You know, how are you deciding what account needs to, you know, improve or what you can do to improve that account? So Hmm. I think, I mean, we should all be using data in every one of our decisions. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Julie? We use a lot of data as well. Um, I I like to look at and share with my team two, three, four year trends. Um, But one thing that you can't see in data, which is super important, is what goes beyond that. So we have a lot of we have a lot of schools that we visit that I like to call feeder schools. Um, a lot of our first, second, third year teachers go there and they only stay there two or three years and then they hmm. move on. Um, yeah. They're not hugely producing schools for us, but what they're producing is a music director that's going to do business with our company for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. So even though even though we're not getting more than two, three, four, five rentals, that's a super, super, super important account that we want to have a great relation with that director. So when they move on to a larger program, um, we want to make sure that we own that relationship. Yeah. Good point. You're planning for your future, right? Right. Yeah. Shane, can I add one other thing to this? Absolutely. I I think it's important to realize that the the data is just the results of all of your hard work Hmm. that you put in. So, um, you know, as I, as I said, as I said earlier, the reason, the reason why we look at the reason why we look at data is because it kind of measures what we do, not necessarily what the account does. So, you know, hmm. you could have an account with a competitor where, you know, the competitor does a hundred rentals and you do 10 and maybe that's based on what you do and not what the account is doing. So I think that it's, it's, it's an important thing to note that data is just the results of all the hard work that's put in, but before the equal sign. Hmm. That's a great way to say it. I like that before the equal sign. Yeah. Very good. So I'm writing that down (laughs) by the way, I'm writing that down. (laughs) That's a good one. Say that again, Alex. Well, it wasn't mine. So all this goes to Robin Walenta, if you know who Robin is. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. Brilliant uh, person. you know, yeah, her, her, her whole, you know, spiel on this is just that, you know, the results are, you know, the, the dollars or the things that we measure are just the results of all the hard work that we put in. And that's, that's everything before the equal sign. The equal sign is those, you know, dollars or units that we, we measure. Mm. That's great. I like that. All right. So we've been talking about the route, which is an incredibly time consuming part of the job. And time is the next thing I want to talk about for a moment. In, in time management, uh, it seems like 
organization, time management. It's a big part of the job. And I'd like to hear some common mistakes you might see in, in early uh, ed rep careers where they might be wasting time or they might not realize that they're uh, not spending time on the right thing. Uh, if there's something that you see somewhat regularly that, that new ed reps should be aware of, let's throw it out now. Uh, what do you think, Julie? Um, not being smart about their stops. Um, this is something that I've been coaching a lot lately. Um, if you know your teacher is out for a day and it's two hours away, it's okay to ship that box of reads so you can spend more time with the teacher that is there <laughs> on the stop before. You know, it, it's 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 like I think sometimes they feel like um, robotic, like they have to make that stop or somebody's going to be really upset with them. Hmm. Um, they have to sign into that school, um, but we need to take advantage of. Um, of these opportunities to, like I said, spend more time with another teacher or um, go meet a new account during that time um, because you don't always have that time. You need to recognize it when you do. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. What do you, what do you think, Tim? I think uh, several um, young road reps can fall into the phone trap. They need to put their phone trap and get their butt in the school. Hmm. Um, and, and it's, it's only natural. It's a tool that, that they use not only for business, but their personal lives are all in that, that uh, little computer that's attached to their hand. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes if they're paying so much attention to their phone, they're losing track of where they need to be, when they need to be, and why they need to be there. Mm. Um, so, so that's one little one. I think another one is over-promising, trying to be the, the, the uh, BMOC the big man on campus and, huh. and saying, yeah, I can get that done without really understanding truly what it's going to take to get that done. Um, so uh, we've, we've all said it um, under promise and over deliver, I think is the key. Um, and then uh, um, I recommend to our road reps that they don't wear a watch hmm. and, and don't have their phone out when they're talking with the director, unless they're taking an order. Um, and they can take an order on their phone, but, but, uh, they can sense when they need to go and, uh, they, they understand. I think it's important that, that they frame that conversation while they're there to, uh, to make it a, let's take care of business and then let's talk personal stuff. Hmm. And I think it's going to, I think that that framework allows for a good 20 to 30 minute call and for them to get done what the director needs them to get done and what the company needs to, for them to get done. Um, so don't wear the watch. You, you know, you've got 30 minutes. You're going to feel that the director's going to start looking at their watch. They're going to look up at the clock. Um, and, uh, uh, we'll shoo you away with those kinds of cues and you have to pay <laughs> attention. You have to pay attention to those. Yeah. Cues. Good point. Yeah. Good. Alex. So, um, most recently we've hired a lot of, um, very, very younger, uh, road reps, you know, maybe they just finished their master's degree or something like that. So they have a, they, they have a deep knowledge of music and everything, but they don't necessarily have a, the f best knowledge of business. Right. And, um, I would say that the, <laughs> the biggest, uh, time waste that they, they, um, present is generally either in the morning or, in the evening and that's whenever they they don't get to work early enough to get everything hmm. done or they don't stay late enough to get everything done or when they're in the office there's uh, they're talking to somebody for too much time and they're not uh, worrying about pulling orders or something like that right so then hmm. you know the next day they're behind the 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 eight ball so i try to make sure that all of our road reps have like you know, if we can, it's not always the case, but if we can, if they can somehow fit eight hours, six to eight hours of office time, right. You know, that they have office time that they can do all of their paperwork and they can, you know, make sure that they're ready for the next day and all that kind of stuff. And, 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 you know, whatever that, that helps them. But, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is, you know, especially if they're a 24 year old, um, just leaving their master's degree or whatever, you know, they got to realize that they have to get into the store probably earlier than eight o'clock to make sure that they get all their stuff uh, to mm. get on the road. Right. I mean, it takes a little bit of time. So, um, you know, getting up is hard for all of us at times. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. I'm thinking back to when I was an ed rep, I wanted to throw out a tip of my own that I learned is uh, when you start your day, leave from your house to your first school. 
don't go into the store because it's a black hole of time. I did that several times. I go into the store in the morning and all of a sudden it's like noon. Uh, how did that happen? You know, it, uh, may, maybe I'm exaggerating a little, but you know, it's just like time. Okay, Shane, we know where it's at now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I felt like I got so much more done if I left my house, went to the first school, and didn't go to the store. And then at the end of the day, go to the store. Uh, because it's just something about going to that store. It's just a black hole of time. Before you know it, hours have slipped away. So all these new ed reps, they're, they're all out there meeting, I'm assuming, their teachers for the very first time. Unless they were perhaps, you know, experienced teachers who knew a lot of teachers in the district already, something like that. But let's assume for a moment that this this new ed rep has never met their customers before. What tips can you offer to to really start this relationship, this this so important relationship on the right foot from day one? What do you think, Alex? Yeah, this is a it's a really interesting question. Um <laughs> You know, you know, have you ever seen those, um, there are those quizzes or whatever to say what instrument you are based on your personality mm. and yeah. all that kind of yeah. stuff. All right. Well, I mean, this is, this is kind of goes into this whole thing, right? You know, you have to <laughs> have to be careful, right? If, uh, you know, you got a little bit of an ego or something and you're going in to see some of these teachers and maybe you present yourself in a light that, uh, you know. I'm better than you. Is that the, is that the old trumpet mm. saying or something mm. like that? <laughs> higher and louder, um, but, fl- faster, higher and louder, faster. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, higher and louder all the time. So, you know, uh, to make a, <laughs> generally to make a great impression, um, I mean, you have to do, uh, Tim, I think said this great earlier is you have to do way more listening, right. than you do, um, telling, you know, we don't, we don't want to, tell too many of the experts who literally who we're talking to we're talking to the experts they're the ones who are the the teachers and everything right now working with their their students so you want to be honest and you want to be transparent but you know you really want to listen to them and make sure that they have their needs set um and you you don't necessarily you know want to come on too strongly i would say you know be supportive um i've seen that you know do fairly well with most of our ed reps and you know, kind of check the ego at the door a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. What do you think, Julie? Okay. You always want to look professional, super important. Um, you always want to be time on time and you don't want to be overconfident. It's okay to say that you need to do some research on that. You don't have the answer right away. And people really respect that if you come back to them. That's, that's number one. That's number one. Mm. Yeah. Good. Tim? Band time, right? Band time is 15 minutes uh, ahead of the, the appointed time. So hmm. she's right. Show up, be up, uh, smile, listen. Uh, the five whys is a wonderful way to, uh, why is that important? Well, why, why is that important? What, why, 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 why? Gets you so many hmm. answers that in so many avenues that you can go down and, and be the listener. Because if you're a listener, you're absorbing uh, uh the client and what they need and, and what they're, what they're all about. Um, so ask a ton of questions. Um, she's right. Communicate well, uh, dress well. Um, don't smell like last night's honky tonk, uh, visit, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be ready to go and, uh, be that, be that sales professional that, that, mm. uh, your, your family needs your, st- and your store needs. Uh, yeah, and you will go far with that, uh, that, uh, uh, those couple things. Good, good. On the flip side, uh, we've already mentioned a few don't, don't smell like a honky tonk bar. Uh, what are some not that ways... that's not that that's a bad thing. It's not a bad We're thing. We're not judging. Just... No, 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 no. <laughs> so, so what are some ways that, uh, you've seen maybe even inadvertently not knowing Ed reps have made a bad impression, bad first impression uh, uh, when they visit their their teachers for the very first time. What do you think, Alex? Oftentimes, I think the problem is that you don't know, you know, mm. and you you huh. you know you'll you'll have uh, you know because a lot. I mean, most, everybody we kind of work with. I mean, they're everybody's generally pretty polite, right? You know, everybody's you know they're fairly personable. I mean, you know. You, everyone's a little different, right? But, you know, the, the problem is, is, um, after the fact, 
And when you start to see Hmm. a bad impression is, you know, we talked about that, you know, on the other side of the equals sign, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see your results starting to go down. And there's where, you know, more that you've made a bad impression other than directly to your directly to face. I mean, you know, most people won't get into confrontation. Most people don't like conflict or anything like that. Um, So, uh, yeah, I, I think that oftentimes you unless you really know somebody really, really well, like, you know, that director really, really well, um, you might not even know that you made a bad impression on the first go around. It might be a month or two months later before you actually figure it out. Huh? Yeah. Maybe they just quietly stop doing business with that person. and They don't even know why. Right. It's the worst. It's the worst, actually. You know, Mm. the, the silent, uh, you know, the silent, um, you know, they're going somewhere else, that type of thing. Yeah. Hmm. Tim, um, I'm a, I'm real lucky. We haven't had uh, too many too many uh, people that make a bad impression because we smoke them out in the interviewing process and the group ah. and the raising process. You know, we're raising road guys within the business a little bit, um, hmm. uh, and uh, so to get to that point, that first call. Um, they're going to have, have spent two weeks on the road already with other district managers, um, or other road reps within the company. And they're going to have, um, some culture beat into them already. Um, so that, that first call will not seem unfamiliar to them. Um, Hmm. it'll be an exciting time and they'll be, they'll be welcoming it. Um, where they, where they can falter, I think is if they, run in and what I call a drop and go, here's your reads. I got to go. That will make a terrible hmm. first impression. Um, like they've got some more, somewhere more important to be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. They go in and they interrupt rehearsal. Oh, I would, ne- you would never recommend a, a new road rep to go in and, hmm. and interrupt podium time. That's uh, that is sacred ground, the sacred cow hmm. of a band directing. Right. Um, so, um, uh, I think it's it's important also for a road rep to respect the person that is in front of them and uh, um, male female. I mean, there are lots of dynamics, and and uh, I think it's really important that you could get a, you could give a bad first impression by not respecting the boundaries uh, bet- between the the, hmm. the gender, and hmm. and I think it's I think it's important uh, for for especially brand new road reps to, to be the pro, always be the pro. Yeah. Good. What do you think, Julie? Tim, I think that was really well said. Um, oh my I God. Think... Write this down. <laughs> Write this down. You did it. <laughs> Woo! Very, very well said. I mean, I think the goal, the goal that you don't make a bad imp- for not making a bad impression is you need to make that director feel that they are the most important at that moment in time. And if you don't accomplish that, it's a bad first impression. Bingo. Hmm. And if you're not dressed well, if you're not, um, you're not making them feel important because you, they're not important enough for you to look nice in your profession. Mm-hmm. If, if, if you don't have information with you, if you don't have what they ordered with you, you're not making that moment in that moment, you're not making them feel important. Mm, great point. Yeah. yeah. That's good stuff. Thank you. So let's move on to a, a different topic uh, in our, our last uh, few minutes here. And that's training and various kinds of training for ed reps. Uh, I'm, I'm curious what you, you have product training, you have uh, just kind of day-to-day route training, you have store policy training, all of these various things that an ed rep needs to do. I'm curious what you find is really an area that, that an ed rep will be more successful if they really do well in this kind of training. What do you think, Julie? Um, it's very difficult for an ed rep because unlike a brick and mortar location, in most brick and mortar locations, you have experts in every department. But when you're mm-hmm. an ed rep, you are you want to be the expert in every department because you are now in that director's home. You're not at your brick and mortar location, and you want to give them the best service possible. Um, I think that really focusing 
well, first, first and foremost, using your vendors to focus on band and orchestra and really nailing, you know, down the product categories in those in those two areas is super, super, super important. Then finding where your passions lie as far as if are you a guitar player? Are you a drummer? And getting that director to understand your strengths and recognizing how you can use your strengths strengths to help that band director or orchestra director. Like for example, I have several road reps that um, do really well selling PA systems. Um, <laughs> they personally are more on the combo side of things versus band and orchestra, but because they are more combo oriented people, they can walk into a band room and see that, you know, this, this would make your life so much easier if you had this Bluetooth system, but the director didn't even know that that is something they would want. So I think kind of melding the two worlds is super, super important because again, that builds trust in the director from, um, getting them to understand that they can learn things from you. And then also that they, that they can be confident that you know all the information that they need from you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. What do you think, Alex? Um, I think uh, there are two things uh, essentially that are the, the most important bits of uh, training. Um, first of all, well, first of all, on product training, I think that, you know, most product training is a lot of just, you know, fat bullets, right? You know, you understand characteristics of the instruments or the things that you're selling, right? The widget, whatever it is, you understand mm -hmm. what that is. But, but aside from that, um, specific sales training, as far as how to actually sell something, mm. um, is, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be, I mean, we could be talking about, um, different industries and everything too. It's still sales training, sales training and understanding how to sell the widget is really important. Um, you know, so we, you know, at West music, we have our own selling culture and our own developed, um, selling cycle and sales training cycle. It's kind of based off of spin selling. If anybody knows about that, um, hmm. you know, the art of asking questions essentially. Right. Um, so that is exceptionally important. That's one of the most important things that they learn how to actually become a good salesperson. And the other thing I think that is really important is negotiation training because literally almost every conversation you get into in your life down to getting your kids to brush their teeth yeah. <laughs> um, is all a negotiation, right? That's all it ever is. It's just literally a negotiation. Who's going to, you know, are we going to split the difference on something or not? Right. So, hmm. um, you know, coupling the two together, great sales training along with great negotiations, you know, makes essentially that equal sign. Here we are. The results just end up going, you know, going through the roof because, you know, they're confident regardless if it's a piccolo or if it's a snare drum that they're working on. Hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Negotiation training. I hadn't thought of that one. That's a good one. I like that. I like what do you that. Think, Tim? Yeah. 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 Uh, what Alex said, repeat. <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> uh, n negotiation training. I, um, uh, that'll be part three for us. Um, hmm. we, uh, uh, we don't do a lot of negotiation training, uh, on, on the road rep, uh, side and, and partially is because, um, we, we, we take the viewpoint. We want the director and the road rep to be in the same boat rowing in the same direction. And, and hmm. uh, um, getting to that point, I can understand there's a, a component of negotiation in there, uh, but it, we, we hopefully it's been more organic than, than uh, uh, the back and forth negotiation. And, and the form of that negotiation, I, would, I, I think I understand, Alex, uh, is, is where you're, you're getting lots of training. Um, product training, uh, there's, again, a certain level that they're coming into the position with um, already. Um, and, and we just build on that layer by layer. Um, and ex it's more experiential than, than it is, um, 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 anything else other, other than we do depend on our, our manufacturer, 
uh, reps uh, to show us what's coming new. At, you know, we go to Midwest as a as a crew and and go through the booths and and uh, um, see what's coming out with with Eastman and and with Yamaha and and uh, um, check out what's happening. and And I think it's important for you to do those events together because. You know, if when you're doing that training, rising tides raises all boats uh, hmm. and it'll bring everybody up to a more level. And then the other part of that is them doing providing me with takeaways. What you know, what'd you get out of that um, so we can go on and do if do we need to do additional training there? Um, there are two books that uh, um, I've asked our guys to uh uh, to read once they get into the job and, and get themselves a, um, a little more more accustomed to to the flow and um, one is a book that's that's uh, unfortunately not not in print anymore it's a book called who wins who loses by Mike Russell hmm. and uh, and uh, it's about the school music business and uh, all the types of different dealers all the scenarios uh, that's what's the motivation of of a school music dealer and and that lays everything out on the table for the the road rep to understand their why hmm. um and to you bet that's not in print anymore yeah and and uh, so we we've, we've um we've got one or two copies that are tattered and worn and and uh um, so we've shared that uh with others the other book that i'd recommend is is a book that's been out um, for a good 10, 15 years now, it's by, by Todd Duncan called High Trust Selling. And uh, um, there are several laws. He approaches things from, from laws in that book that uh, it's written from the mortgage industry standpoint, but it certainly applies to the professional sales uh, um, training and, and, uh, um, and certainly understanding the value of the relationship is is clearly spelled out in that book and and uh, hmm. so I'd, I'd really recommend that um and then the other th one last thing that that uh, we do that i'm i'm really proud of is in in that it has to do with um uh, the former owner warner page uh building into um uh um our our dna is that we participate in in uh, um, outside education so nasmd is a thing for our road reps and mm. uh, um, typically every other year, uh, we take turns going to East Coast, West Coast, um, and wherever they may be, and and we go and participate and learn and sit and uh, and then gather on the side and talk about what we've just learned and how that might apply to us and and uh, um, and so if if I could make any recommendation is to make an ASMD a part of the road rep training regularly. Um, hmm. not just a highlight every five year, but, but that, that level of training is, I think is invaluable for that road rep. It's not only a place that they can learn a ton. It's also a place that they can get some affirmation about, oh, I've been feeling that same thing. I understand that. Hmm. And they get some ideas on how to best handle, uh, that next situation that comes, comes down the road. Um, so a couple books and ASMD and then the, the, uh, uh, the normal product training that, uh, uh, that we all do. Yeah. All good stuff. All good stuff. I appreciate all of this information for the sake of time. I'm going to leave it to one last question. And this one, I actually didn't, uh, I, I sent you all questions ahead of time and this one just kind of came to me and, and I'm going to throw it out there. So if you were to go back to you as a first year ed rep, what advice would you give yourself as that first year ed rep to be more successful, what do you wish you had known then? Julie? Um, it's all about the relationship. Relationships create success. And I think um, growing business is really difficult. And I think as beginning, as a new road rep, I think we're a little bit naive to that. And we go into it being really gung ho, trying to win over the business. But I don't think we really understand how important those relationships are and how much they impact things over years to come. So as a, as a new, as a, if I could go back, I think that I would, I would really, really focus more on just forming those relationships better. Hmm. Yeah. Great. What do you think, Alex? 
I think I might say, um, you know, slow down to go fast, hmm. right? Hmm. So, you know, um, you know, be patient, you know, because because things will happen for you, and you know, try not to rush around to be organized, right? There's a that's a fun little conundrum, right? <laughs> okay, hmm. um, but you know, it's it really is. I mean, like oftentimes your first year on the road, you're you're trying to keep your head above above water, right? Um, and you're trying to learn everything as much as you possibly can, but um, in the same regard, you need to you need to slow yourself down so that you can retain the the important information you're trying to learn, um, as well as retain the relationships as as Julie just mentioned. Um, those are not built immediately; uh, those are built over time. People have to learn how to be comfortable with you. Um, so, you know, it's a slow process and just understand that uh, mm. that's how you'll get ahead, uh, faster. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Tim, he took my answer, slow down, no. slow down to go fast. Um, I was, I, as a young Sorry, road Tim. rep, that's okay. No worries. As a young road, road rep, uh, I was, um, going fast and hard and fast and, you know, my hair is on fire so much that it's no longer there. <laughs> and, um, I um, didn't didn't quite understand that I sh- I needed to slow uh, slow that process and and uh, um, I think I, I could have been a, a much more successful road rep and and fortunately mm-hmm. I've had I've had some great mentors along the way um, um, certainly Mark Goff uh, has uh, had a huge impact on on my life and, and hence our, our DMs lives out there. Um, and, uh, uh, Warner page and Steve Purcell, certainly, um, hmm. pay attention to those, those guys with silver hair. Um, uh, <laughs> Joe Guth was a great mentor. And I think if I had slowed down long, uh, long before I realized I needed to slow down, um, it could have been that much better. And, hmm. and that's, yeah. and that's all it takes is to be that much better every single time. Great stuff. Great stuff. I think I'll throw out one of my own, just thinking back to when I was uh, a young end rep. I, I think for me, it was, uh, if I would go back and tell myself something, it'd be, don't take it too personally. Like <laughs> if, if you lose a rental night or maybe you have a, a competitor come in and they're invited to this rental night you feel you deserved was, you know, maybe an exclusive or maybe you lose a school bid sale to something. I used to get really upset about it and I'd go home and just tell my wife, like, I can't believe this happened. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, we're not saving lives. Um, it's OK. And if I were to go back to myself, I'd say just think about how you could have done it better, improve and win it next time. But don't take it too personally because yeah, I really did. So I think I, I, talking to a lot of ed reps out there, it's hard to not take it personally, right? Because. You put your blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of hours on the road, a lot of uh, early mornings and late nights, right? That's personal. It is, it is absolutely I think, Don't personal. let it ruin you. Yeah, great great advice, yeah. Shane. It is personal out there, but you can't let it get you down. You got to keep rolling. Yeah. I can't thank all of you enough. I'm so glad this worked out to have us all in one call at one time. And uh, I'm sure that new ed reps and those who've been out there for a while uh, gleaned a lot of great wisdom from you today. And I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, we could make this a whole series of, of what what advice would you give a first year ed rep? Because like you said, there's a fire hose of information we could learn from. But uh, appreciate you uh, kicking us off with the session today. Well, you're welcome, Shane. Thank Thanks, you everybody. so much for, for having thank us you. and inviting us to be on with you. It's awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. We hope you found the information in this episode useful and something you can use in your everyday life as an ed rep. If there is a topic you'd like to learn more about and have presented on a future episode of Ed Rep Radio, or you'd like to give us some feedback in general, please email us at edrepradio at eastmanstrings.com. To learn more about Eastman Music Company, go to our website, eastmanmusiccompany.com, or give your Eastman rep a call. Thanks, and drive safe.